So there's quite a nice selection of armor sets in Ghost of Tsushima that you're definitely going to want to get your hands on. Some of them can be truly amazing at almost anything the game has to throw at you, while others might not be that great past the first few hours you get to test them. There's also a few of them that can be truly gimmicky, but with the proper build you can definitely make them shine and bring out their true potential. Which is why in this video I want to cover the best and the worst armor sets you can get in Ghost of Tsushima, while also taking into account the best builds you can apply to them. So let's jump right into it with everything you need to know and as always a thumbs up on this video would be super appreciated. First things first, it goes without saying that between the 12 armors you can get in this game, two of them aren't actually combat oriented, which is why I've completely excluded them from the list or at the very least you can consider them at the bottom of the list. This includes the broken armor from the start of the game, it doesn't have any stats, so of course it's basically the dead last when it comes to usefulness, but then there's also the traveler's outfit that only gives perks to exploration, so this also isn't combat oriented. But with that out of the way, let's jump over the 10 ones that we have. And I want to start with number 10 right here, which is also something that you get really early on, assuming that you have pre-ordered the deluxe edition of this game. And that is none other than the Hero of Tsushima armor set, also one of the best looking in the game. This comes with some really great benefits for the first few hours of the game, which is mostly that amazing buff to HP and damage reduction that uh, kind of seems to be on par with something that would be level 3 out of 4 for other armor sets. The downside of course is the fact that it cannot be upgraded, it falls off really quickly as soon as you get the Samurai Clan armor which already does everything better than this one and it also has the resolve gain bonus over there that makes it much better once it's fully upgraded. This brings us to number 9 and as much as this pains me even though it's one of the best looking sets in the game, the Ronin attire isn't something Thing that's going to fully carry you in the end game unless you're compensating with other items and other upgrades. It doesn't mean this isn't a good early on armor, it definitely is, you get it from the first mission for Ryuzo in basically the first couple of hours in the game. It does provide a really nice 30% melee damage bonus which is very important when you don't already have the katana fully upgraded so it's easier to take down enemies but otherwise one of the perks is quite situational since you're not going to always play around grass fields and Second of all, the ghost armor has double the amount of enemy detection reduction by just being a little bit later on in the game. So again, by the middle of the game, you're going to completely replace this armor with the ghost armor and have way more benefits than it. Now let's move over to number 8, which brings us to the Kensei armor, one of the most iconic for the game since it was shown during the first gameplay reveal from 2017. It's also a reward from by far one of the best designed quests in the game, the mythical tail, six blades of Kojiro, but otherwise it's not going to be as spectacular as you might think, and there is a few reasons for why that's the case. Now the first two perks are obviously quite useful, especially the ghost weapon damage bonus which can really fit nicely with a charm of Ryujin and the charm of hidden blades, you can turn this into a kunai build that lets it really easy for you to spam these kunais, take down enemies guards and even take them in one shot if you buff it up properly with other charms that provide bonus to ghost weapon damage. The problem with this is that its last perk is way less useful than you might otherwise think, even though it does say that it provides some really big debuffs, when you use a ghost weapon against an enemy it debuffs them by making them deal 50% less damage while also receiving 50% more damage. But unless you haven't upgraded literally anything else, unless you take a very long time to kill enemies, this isn't going to be such a big benefit that you think it is, because if you think about it, it takes no more than a few shots to take down even the biggest target and the only target that would have a real benefit to have this kind of perk used against would be a boss enemy but unfortunately we cannot use ghost weapons against boss enemies where this kind of buff would definitely shine. So that's an unfortunate situation, it isn't that useful past the middle game, it's still a good armor to have but there are others that deal much better in the department of damage. This also brings us to number 7 and probably a lot of people are going to be taken by surprise by this, also my decision, but um, this is the Fundoshi armor that you get as a reward from discovering all of the 18 hot springs in the game. And I know what you're thinking, why did I rank this higher than the previous one? I'm gonna give you a reason why. Some of the gimmick abilities in this game, even though they sound harmless, are actually downright OP, if not even broken. And this is basically the perk right here, the running and sprinting, not 
making any noise. Um, that is actually really broken when you consider that stealth and stealth kills are the best ways to clear up entire enemy groups. So once you fully upgrade your character, once you have everything you need in terms of charms and weapon upgrades, this is the perfect way to sneak up on any enemy group. You can run, you can sprint behind them, they aren't going to be able to find you. You can even sneak around them like houses and structures and buildings and nobody is going to hear you which means you're going to run undetected up until the very last moment when it's already too late because you're already pulling off a chain assassination. This is what actually makes this so powerful despite its very goofy looks. The only downside is the fact that since it doesn't have any other stats it falls off against anything else rather than enemy camps like for example scripted events, missions but even more so boss enemies since you won't benefit at all from that. This also brings us to number 6 on the list, one of my favorite armors because it's one of my favorite builds that I've also covered in the past on this channel and that is none other than Tadayori's armor. It's also a reward from the mythical questline with the same name, you can get this really early on, even the build can be gotten really early on and the reason why I've ranked this this high is because if you make it properly you can truly change completely your playstyle in the game completely bypassing the katana and still feel very powerful. So it's basically going to be amazing at the infinite arrows build that I've covered in the past using the charms of Izanagi and two charms of fortune to constantly get concentration and arrows back and constantly shoot enemies from afar and nobody's going to be able to touch you. So it's almost infinite in that regard. The downside to this is basically everything else. It doesn't have any health or damage reduction bonuses, it doesn't provide anything Thing to the katana which is obviously the most important weapon in the game which makes it have limited use outside of a few of these group or camp fights like for example boss fights are obviously not going to benefit you at all if you use this build. Nonetheless with these out of the way it's time to enter the second half basically the last five armors that are truly spectacular in each of their respective ways. At number five we have the Sakai clan armor quite an early acquisition from one of the first missions that you can get in Act 2. And the reason this is so amazing is because it can basically carry you through the entire game once you get it without ever needing to change it. It basically gives you a major increase to melee as well as health which is something that's good from the very beginning of the game all up until the end. What's best about it is the fact that if you carry this and it's fully upgraded you can stand off with up to 5 enemies at the same time. This means that if your standoff gameplay is good and you can hit all of those enemies at the right time this means you can clear out entire groups of enemies and even camps with just one single standoff which also coincidentally gives you a ton of resolve meter back. This is also why I really enjoy um, using this build with something that provides a ton of resolve meter once I use these abilities. Now the reason why I'm not ranking this higher is because of its trade-offs. First of all the standoff isn't going to be always available especially once the enemy already detects you or even more so there are certain points in the game where standoffs are simply prohibited prohibited and you have to take the enemies in other ways. Furthermore, you can easily fail a standoff since there can be some problems with them, especially in tight spots. And lastly, even though some of these stats say that they're massive or major, in reality they aren't really that big. Just take a look for example at this massive increase in HP which is barely noticeable once you fully upgrade yourself, so definitely not that great once you're in the end game. This also brings us to the last four of them. and start Starting with number 4, a very interesting choice, but I'm gonna give you a reason why that is the case, is the Samurai Clan Armor. Even though it is a very early on acquisition in Act 1, don't be fooled by its usefulness because it is by far the tankiest armor set in the game to the point that you can create an invincibility build with this armor set alone. Basically all of the 3 stats are amazing at doing a tanky build, so you have massive health and major damage reduction, but also the 30% bonus to resolve gain which means that if you combine this armor set with two charms of resistance as well as two charms of resolve for example like resolve 2 and silence or two charms of resolve this means you can constantly go in combat simply hold up 
the block button and then just wait for enemies to attack you. One single hit from the enemy can almost always fill up a resolve bar and then you can immediately use that to fully heal yourself up. Even more so if you add a charm that provides additional healing when under 50% HP, which as you can see the results speak for themselves. This brings us to number 3 on the list and that is none other than Ghost Armor. You might be thinking this should have been number 1 and it definitely could be. The last 3 spots are very close to one another so it's all a matter of choice from this point on. But for me it was definitely the Ghost Armor. You get this automatically in Act 2 so it's a really early on one that you can get. It also provides you some of the best Ghost playstyle buffs like for example the best enemy detection speed by 40% but what makes it truly powerful is the fact that you require way less kills to enter the ghost stands, so only 5 instead of the usual 7 which means clearing up groups of enemies is much easier than ever before. Also that terrify on kill makes it really easy to branch into a terrify build where you can use something like this charm right here for additional terrifies as well as the charms of fortune to make that even easier to happen. Um, the only real weakness is the fact that against enemy bosses there aren't well any bonuses to that so you're not going to see any benefit from all of these perks against those scenarios. This brings us to number 2 on the list and as crazy as this sounds there is actually a better stealth armor than the ghost armor, you probably already know of this, the mongol commander armor that's a reward from the fit for the Khan side tail that starts in act 3 once you reach the jogaku temple. Um, it basically comes with some really useful stats for survivability but its biggest perk of course and advantage is the disguise perk that is probably even better than anything on the ghost armor and it makes approaching enemies so much easier since they cannot detect you at least up until the very last moment even if you stay in front of them even if they look at you directly they're going to notice you way too late up until you can just start your chain assassinations so yes this is the superior version of the ghost armor the only real downside I can think of is the fact that it doesn't provide any perks to damage but who needs that when you can chain assassinate enemies anyway so maybe only against boss enemies it might have a slight minus but this this brings us to the absolute best on the list and I'm gonna give you a few reasons for why that's the case. Also my favorite by far in terms of everything, in terms of looks, functionalities and even like the story behind it and that is the Gosaku's Unbreakable Armor. This is a reward from the Legend of Gosaku Mythical Tale that you can start in Act 2. But what makes this armor truly amazing is the fact that it doesn't have any weakness. It provides massive survivability with the massive health increase, it provides the best and the only bonus on armor to stagger damage and furthermore the best heal on kill when you kill staggered enemies by 20%. So basically this makes it great against literally anything in the game including groups of enemies, bosses and especially so bosses. Staggered damage in the game is king against bosses especially if you combine this armor with two charms of bludgeoning which means you can take down their defenses in no more than two or three hits. So this makes them easy targets to pick off and just take them down with your other abilities. So yeah, this is it with the ranking, let me know down below if your ranking is different, let me know what is, in your opinion, the best armor set in the game. In the meantime, if you enjoyed this video, also don't forget to subscribe and activate that notification bell, and I will see you guys in the next one.